I would share that which is most precious to me in conclusion. It is required for each member of the Twelve to have an absolute knowledge of the Savior. We are not at liberty to say how individually we receive that knowledge, and I would not ask the brethren that I serve with how they have their witness. We need to depend on the Spirit confirming the truth of what we say. But in all humility, as we close this meeting, I would like to say that there was a council in heaven. We were present. Two plans were established. Lucifer's plan of compulsion was rejected. The Father's plan of happiness was presented by the Savior. He did come to earth. He lived as the scriptures describe his having lived. He did experience that incomprehensible series of events that we call the atonement. We speak of how physically difficult it was for him, and that must have been terribly challenging. I've had the privilege recently of working on the replacement for the legacy film in which there are scenes of the crucifixion. But that physical pain was not all that made that challenging. He knew that except his atonement be perfect of infinite reach, no single person would ever return to Father in Heaven. For justice would rule him out for the mistakes we make. And Satan, in the end, would win. And his father, who he loved and served and continues to serve perfectly, would have failed. There had to be that possibility or would have been no test for the Savior. And then above all of that, in his pure and holy and righteous mind and heart, there were poured in all of the consequences of the despicable. Every conceivable violation of trust and of law, the filthy. And he had experienced that. He did it perfectly. And as a solemn witness, I declare, I know he is a resurrected, perfected being. He lives. And he guides this church. I bear that solemn witness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.